What's going on guys, Dr. Andrew Fix back. Another episode here on The Code. Thank you so much for tuning in, joining us. Um, I know if you've been listening to this podcast, you've heard me do this before, but we are cruising on the way to work today. Um, I won't be looking at the camera quite as much, just safety first, but uh, appreciate you bearing with us as we try to maximize our time here in this busy world that we all live in and uh, get this podcast episode and recording out to you guys while we're heading to work. And, um, you know, I think it's ironic that I'm in the car because the story that I'm going to talk about today has also something to do with a vehicle, with a car, and, um, and something that I saw last night. So hopefully this episode turns into, you know, not too big of a rant for you guys, but uh, I saw something last night when I was out in the neighborhood that just really frustrated me. And, and honestly, I was only a few minutes away from our one of our physio room clinic locations here in the South Denver area. And um, so let me just lay it out. And <clears throat> if it feels a little ranty, sorry about that, but I'll get to a good point, I think, by the end of this conversation. And uh, so first of all, I was super grateful this weekend. I got to spend a lot of time with family, uh, with our little kids, my, you know, our son Aiden and uh, his little cousins. We had one of his cousins' two-year-old birthday parties and um, just got to spend a lot of time together. But then by the end of the weekend, um, we had you know prepared food numerous days in a row for several people. And um, we were just tired of making, making food. So we decided, okay, we're gonna order some food. And uh, I was the one that um, went to go pick it up. So right, I was going to a restaurant here nearby, near my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's house pick up some food for a to-go order and I'm pulling into the parking lot and I'm normally one of the people that I like to not park in the closest spot available I like to walk a little bit so if I'm at the grocery store I'll pull in the lot and I'll take one of the first few spots that I see go snag a cart and walk um, just because I want to get a little bit more movement in now if you're somebody who wants to park closer by all means that's your your prerogative your decision to do so and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that but what I saw last night was something that really just frustrated me. And, you know, it wasn't because it seemed like it actually caused anyone any difficulty or hardship, but it uh, it was just the principle of the thing. So I pull in, I'm walking towards the front door of the restaurant and, uh, and I see this other car pull in and the gentleman who's driving it parks in the handicap spot right? And there's only like two handicapped spots, it seemed like at this particular restaurant. And this guy parks, boom, right there, right in one of the handicapped spots, very close to the to the ramp on the sidewalk and right by the front door of the restaurant. And you know, I'm glancing, uh, I see this guy get out of his car and he is completely able-bodied. He probably is only a couple years older than me. So I'm guessing he's in his late thirties, maybe 40 years old. And, uh, does not appear to be handicapped whatsoever. So then I glance back at the car to see if there's a handicapped tag hanging from it, and there's not. And um, so, you know, immediately I just started to judge this situation, right? And I kind of felt bad that I was judging, but I was also frustrated that somebody who is very obviously not handicapped parks in the handicapped spot, despite the fact that there's so many... Um, like that it's not a very busy time, despite the fact that the parking lot's not very full, um, there's spots open all over the place. This guy, as it turns out, was actually just like me, showing up to pick up a to-go order. So he probably figured, I'm only gonna be here for a couple minutes getting my to-go order. Uh, you know, what's the big deal if I park in this handicapped spot? But to me, it is a big deal because one, you're not handicapped. Those spaces are for people that have physical limitations that have a hard time getting, um, you know, whether it's a wheelchair or a walker or a cane or they have balance issues, or maybe someone just had a surgery, like those spots are there for a reason for people who have a hard time traveling the distance from the parking lot into the restaurant, not for any normal person to park in just because you think you're only going to be there for a few minutes. And, um, well, so I'm right behind this guy in line to pick up our to-go order and, you know, I just felt like he was kind of, uh, I mean, rude might not be the right word, but like very short and to the point with the hostess, you know, who like greets him. Hey, 
how are you doing today? How can I help you? And he just like shows her his phone. Um, I'm here to pick up a to-go order. He doesn't say really like hello back. He doesn't ask her how she's doing. Um, now he may have said thank you. I didn't really hear him do that, but I was already kind of frustrated by the fact that I saw this guy park in the handicapped parking space when he's not handicapped to begin with. So then anything else that he did, just kind of like, I was already irritated with him to begin with, right? So then I tried to be extra friendly to the, the woman at the hostess stand, ask her how her day was, um, you know, tell her, have a great rest of your evening as I picked up our to-go order. And then I walked back outside and I follow this guy out and he gets back in his car and leaves. And like I said, we were only there for a few minutes, but that's not the point, right? The point is those spaces are for other people, not for you, not for anyone to park in. And there were plenty of spots to choose from, right? This restaurant was not full. The parking lot had more empty spaces than it did full spaces. And there was another space right next to the one that he parked in that was not handicapped that he could have chosen, right? He could have moved one space to the left and there was another spot for him to choose that would have literally required like 10 more feet of driving, or excuse me, 10 more feet of walking for him to get into the restaurant. So um, I guess what I, the point I'm trying to make here, and, and it goes back to we were hanging out with my sister-in-law and their family um, and they have a two-year-old, like I said, and she is in the copycat phase, right? You have to be very careful what you say around her because she's gonna say whatever it is that you said afterwards. So if you drop some inappropriate words, she's probably gonna start saying those. If um, you ask her to say something, she typically repeats exactly what you said because that's the phase that she's in. And she's always watching, right? Our son is four months old, four and a half. He's always watching and when you're out in the community or you're at your workplace, no matter what position you're in, no matter what position you hold, people are always watching, right? So like people notice the things that you do, whether you notice them seeing you do that or not. And uh, I like to use the phrase like, we are always on stage, especially if you're in a leadership position or you're a parent or you're a coach, um, you're a medical provider, like, people are always watching and you are always on stage. It's always a performance and you have to be performing to the best of your abilities whenever possible because other people are gonna notice, right? If you are a medical provider and you are trying to preach health to people but you don't appear to be a very healthy person yourself by the way that you hold yourself, by the way that you dress, by the way that you um, carry yourself in the way it appears that you take care of yourself, people are going to notice that your clients, your patients, they're going to see that. If you're a parent and many of you probably listen to this have been parents much longer than me and you already know this to be true, like your kids are watching what you do. You need to set a good example for them, right? And I was talking with my brother-in-law this weekend about this idea, this concept of like, we can't put our lives on hold in order to raise our kids. We have to continue to live our lives and take care of ourselves and have time for us while we raise our kids. Because what that's going to do is not diminish the upbringing of, of our kids, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna set a great example for them. It's gonna let them know that even though life is super busy, that we still need to take care of ourselves. We need still need to train and to exercise and to you know, food prep and eat healthy. We still need to go do things for ourselves, go do date nights with mom, and um, and that's okay to do. And if that means you need a little bit of assistance from a childcare facility, from a nanny, from friends or family to babysit for you, uh, that's okay, right? Like, you know, there's this belief that, you know, you should feel guilty or people do feel guilty when someone else helps to watch and raise their kids. But I sort of look at it like, if it's going to help save you time that you're able to use to take care of yourself or to generate an income that uh, that you're going to help use to raise the family and raise the kids, well, then it's just trade-offs, right? It's not like you know, you're know you doing something that you should feel guilty of because you're not the one at home raising your kids. It's a trade-off. And I'm not saying you shouldn't spend time with your kids. I tried to spend as much time this weekend 
with Aiden as possible and um, didn't get as much work done. One of the reasons we're recording this on the way to the office. So moral of the story, people are always watching you. And whether you like it or not, you're going to be judged by your actions. And I'm a big believer, as many of you probably are too, that actions speak louder than words. And it wouldn't have mattered, this random stranger that I've never met, it wouldn't have mattered what he told me. The reason was that he parked in the handicap spot. When I saw him walk into the restaurant, has no handicap sticker or thing hanging from his rear view mirror, he's not limping or anything, appeared to be extremely able-bodied, like I said, Um, and I don't know anything about him, so yes, I'm judging him, but action speaks louder than words, and he could have parked one spot to the left, and we wouldn't even be having this conversation, because I wouldn't have gotten frustrated by what I saw, but it just frustrated me that, you know, he parked in a spot that is designated for other people, not for him. And, you know, quite frankly, it's illegal, right? And, you know, whether or not you think that the rule or the law is the way that it should be, we still need to respect the law, right? It's like rules are there for a reason so that the people who actually need it, need those spaces, have them available when the time comes that they need to use it. And just because you think that the restaurant's not busy and there's plenty of spots to choose from doesn't give you a reason to take that spot that's designated for somebody else. So... I just want to leave you guys with remember that you're always on stage and it doesn't matter who's watching or who's not watching. We should be doing the right thing, right? Like we want to be people that are known to have great integrity, great character, and you should do the right thing whether or not somebody is watching you. And if you're only going to do the right thing if somebody is watching, then I encourage you to take a good hard look in the mirror each morning when you wake up and just ask yourself, is that the type of person that I want to be? Am I the type of person that will only do right in certain situations if I know somebody's going to catch me in the act, if I know somebody's going to be watching me? Or do you want to be the type of person who no matter the situation, no matter who's watching, no matter if it's just you in the mirror, You want to know that you could tell yourself later that day, I did the right thing in that situation. If someone was watching me, they would know that I'm a person of great character and great integrity. And hopefully you choose that latter option, right? Hopefully you choose the second one. And if you have kids, I think it's a little bit easier to resonate with that. But even if you don't, you know, just imagine if you happened to be that handicapped person or you happen to have a loved one that was, and you saw somebody else pull into the handicapped spot and get out of their car and walk totally normal, like how would that make you feel, right? If you were were banking on needing that spot because of the limitations that you have, like those spots are there for a reason. So remember the handicapped places, spaces are for people who are actually handicapped or have a physical disability and you're always on stage and people are watching you. So behave and act in a way that you would be proud of if you knew that someone was watching you, even if they're not. Thanks again for tuning in, you guys, to this episode of The Code. Like I said, I hope it wasn't too much of a rant. And um, if you've listened to this show before, you've heard me say this. If you've not, and this is your first time, I would love for you to do this as well. Um, This show thrives off of reviews, you guys. We are really trying to get up to 200 five-star reviews so that we can get these episodes out to more and more people on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. If you could scroll to the review section, drop a five-star review on there and help us grow that. If you have comments, questions, concerns, please let us know. All my contact information is in the show notes or you could leave a comment on this show. And uh, again, I really appreciate you tuning in. Dr. Andrew Fix with the code. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you guys on another episode in the future. See you later.